Alright, so if you're watching this, I assume you want to geek out a little bit. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I wanted to have a, a little bit of a lengthier discussion than was really allowed for uh, brevity's sake on the prior episode because these things are very often misunderstood and when the stock coil goes bad, it is extremely common to see the wrong type of coil get installed back into the car or uh, just as bad that it gets installed incorrectly. So uh, let's kind of go through all the details here. So the external resistor, which is also called a ballast resistor, uh, this thing controls the voltage that's getting fed into the coil. This thing's job is to protect the coil from burning up from excessive voltage. And only for the short time while the car is cranking will the voltage uh, not be uh, tampered down or resisted, uh, which really only should be a short moment. And that's to help the car start with a stronger than normal spark. Now, most of our Zs have this external resistor because the stock coils that were used did not have external or did not have resistors built into them. The problem is when the stock coil goes bad, Z owners very often choose aftermarket coils that sound awesome on paper, but may not be suited for their application. The biggest mistake is choosing a coil that has a resistor built in and has a primary resistance characteristic that is much higher than is recommended by Datsun. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit more on that later. So the resistor has several connections which may be confusing, so I'll explain all of them now. So the first connection that is closest to the front of the car feeds 12 volts of power when the ignition is set to on. Uh, so this is a terminal that feeds uh, power to the ignition coil 99.99% of the time. The second terminal provides 12 volts of power only while the car is cranking, which is the other, I guess, 0.01% of the time. Um, and typically, this terminal also has another connection. Um, so this one is just for the condenser. Uh, condenser is this thing right here. So both of these wires are blue and black, so it can be confusing. Oftentimes you'll see only one connection here because the, this condenser is really just optional. It minimizes the electrical interference, interference getting uh, picked up by your radio so that you don't hear as much uh, static. My stereo doesn't even work anyway, so I could remove this thing and not see any ill effects. So the third node provides power to the positive side of the ignition coil and the, or this one, and the fourth node connects to the negative side of the coil. So this external resistor is only meant to be effective going from the first terminal to the third terminal, but not impede the voltage going from the second terminal to the third terminal. In the other video, we measure the resistance across the first and the fourth terminals with the ignition coil uh, hooked up which effectively measures the resistance across both the external resistor and the coil. That resistance, as we've mentioned before, should be something in between 1.6 and 2.0 ohms. So here's what all of that means. If you've measured a resistance that is out of that range across first and fourth with the ignition coil hooked up, you have to figure out whether you have a problem with the external resistor or the coil. Now, in all likelihood, uh, you measured a resistance that is higher than two ohms and you're wondering what's going on. Um, and I was actually in the exact same boat. So I should mention that it's very unlikely that your external resistor has gone bad. Uh, maybe your terminals have corroded just a bit and you need to clean them up, but it's not common for these external resistors to go bad. I'd guess nine times out of 10, uh, you have a coil that has either gone bad or someone installed a coil that has too much resistance uh, for your application. But if you want to measure the resistance for the external resistor just by itself anyway, uh, it's really easy to do. So all we have to do is disconnect this first terminal here and measure the resistance between the first terminal and the third terminal. I'm gonna to try to do that without blocking your view. So the resistance that we're reading is around 
and you're looking for something in between 1.15 and 1.45. Add to that the roughly 0 0.5 ohms of primary resistance of the coil, and that's how you end up with a factory spec of 1.6 to 2 ohms across first and the fourth. I hope that makes sense. So this is a good time to talk about the coil. When you purchase a coil, you really have four characteristics that you need to look for. One is the primary resistance, two, the secondary resistance, third, the input voltage, and four, whether or not there is an internal resistor built in. The typical marketing for aftermarket ignition coils tend to focus on the, I don't know, how many thousands of volts the coil is capable of sparking, but I really just kind of ignore that spec for the most part. Why do I have so many different coils? Um, because I was an idiot and I bought a whole bunch of coils before I knew what I was doing. So I'm going to try to explain uh, why only one of these is a good coil to use in the 280Z in the stock configuration so that you guys don't make the same mistake and waste a whole bunch of money buying coils you don't need. So the primary resistance of a coil is between the resistance between the positive and the negative terminals of the coil. And the coil that you need to use with this uh, external resistor that we have in the car, anything below 0 0.5, even 0 0.6 is okay, which is what I have here. And some of the coils actually have the primary resistance marked on the coil, just like this one and this one. But a lot of times you just won't find that, so you need to know how to measure it. So I'm going to take the multimeter, set it to uh, measure resistance. If I put the probe between. You can see that it's exactly 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 or 0 0.5, uh, which is basically what this uh, was meant to be. It's tough these days to find one that uh, has a primary uh, resistance less than 0.6 so this is the one that I got for my application this is a flamethrower 2 and this is also a flamethrower ignition unit ignition coil but this one is rated at 1.5 which is a lot uh, more resistance than what we're looking for this one is actually at 3. Point, I, I think over 3.0 so if I just measure this one I get a primary resistance reading of over 4 ohms. So this is definitely the wrong coil for my application. And I'll, I'll explain further why in a second. And the secondary resistance of the coil is between either one of the terminals and inside of the coil. So let's measure that real quick. And just in case you guys can't see, I'm reading something right above 8,000. So the factory spec range for this is actually 8.5 to 12.7. But for the life of me, I cannot find a coil that has a primary resistance that's less than 0.5 and a secondary resistance that is higher than 8.5. So again, this is the one that I have. And you also need to make sure that you're getting the right coil in terms of voltage. And all of these are 12 volts. And most likely you'll also be using an ignition coil meant for primary voltage of 12 volts, but uh, you should check your FSM just to make sure. Lastly, if you plan on running your external resistor, you'll need to find a coil that doesn't have one built in. This one actually says on the casing, used with primary resistance wire or external resistor. So this one does not have an internal resistor built in. Neither does either one of the flamethrower units. This one just happens to be in the primary resistance range that I like much more. This one, on the other hand, uh, actually does have an internal resistor built in, which is why that primary resistance much is much higher than any one of these. In fact, this one is probably higher than all three of these combined. If you plan on running a coil with a resistor built in for whatever reason, you need to learn to bypass the external resistor, either by removing it completely, which uh, I don't recommend you do unless you're replacing the entire ignition system, or simply rewiring the external resistor. And you remember how I was talking about how the second terminal doesn't actually have any resistance going to the third terminal? That means that you can actually bypass the external resistor 
by moving the, the first connection to the second terminal, just like that. So right now you are effectively bypassing the resistance because you've now are feeding 12 volts of power to the second terminal at all times. That's really all there is to it to bypass this thing. And now let's talk about how the coil is connected to the external resistor. The third terminal, which is this white and black wire here, goes to the positive side of the coil, which should be clearly marked. And the fourth connection or the fourth terminal goes to the negative side of the coil. Interesting fact, your car will run if the, the coil is hooked up backwards, but your engine won't run as well as it should and the spark will be much weaker. In fact, my coil was actually hooked up backwards by a previous owner and I didn't actually even notice until I went through this procedure and checked against the wiring diagrams. And here's the thing, uh, there was a bunch of problems that I was having with the engine and how it was running that I've been just blaming on the fuel injection system. One problem was a delayed start where I was just cranking the engine for a while before the, the, before the engine would turn over. <laughs> and the second issue was I was uh, experiencing backfiring at rapid deceleration. which I kind of originally thought that the engine was running too rich. Now, I am convinced that all, both of those problems were caused by having a coil that had too high of a resistance for my Z and it was hooked up backwards. So this is the coil that I actually pulled out of the car. The primary resistance of this coil is actually around two ohms, which is way higher than the 0.5 ohms that I'm supposed to be using. Both of the problems that I just mentioned were caused by the ignition coil. After replacing the coil with this one and hooking it up properly, I see neither one of those problems, which is really amazing. And one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to make this video so that you guys don't uh, experience the same problem and wonder why. All right, I know that was a lot of details and I hope you guys found this topic to be as interesting as I did. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. And if the weather is nice, we'll go for a mid tune up test drive, uh, mostly because I just wanna show off how, uh, how much better this car is running already. So see you guys next time.